Hello there, you're watching Dansky and this is the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to repeat patterns in Adobe Illustrator. So you can see on screen, I've got a pattern that I've just created. So we have a background made up of a rectangle and lots of different shapes, all drawn using the shape tools and the pen tool, and they all have their own global swatches. So once you've created your pattern, just drag over everything and go to object and group. This will group it into one object as you move it around. And there's two ways that you can get to the pattern options. The first one is you can drag your grouped object into the swatches panel and you'll see it adds it in there. And if you double click that swatch, it will then bring up the pattern options. And the second way is simply by going to window at the top and down to pattern options. And then from the menu at the top, you can select make pattern and it will explain that it's adding this to the swatch panel and any changes that you do make in the pattern options will be updated to the swatch. So now we get a few options. Let's just zoom out. So we can see a little bit more of our pattern. So it shows a dimmed version of where our pattern is going to extend to and we have the original pattern in the middle. Now we can give this a name. So we could call this cutesy wallpaper, give that swatch a name. And we can also select the tile type. So we have grid selected by default, but we can of course cycle through these different ones depending on the type of pattern or the offset that you're looking for. So if I select brick by column, you can see that I get the brick offset drop down here and we can even adjust that. So lots of different options. We'll stick with grid for now. Now the width and height is the width and height of our pattern. So we can lock these proportions. So if we change the width to 500, it will update the height proportionally to 500 as well. And you can see that kind of messes around with what we've done. So we'll, I think we'll go back to a thousand. So it includes all of the elements within our pattern. And of course we can size the tile to our artwork and we can move the tile with the artwork as well. So there's lots of different options here and if you play around with them, you can see they're not doing much here, but you can play around with them depending on the pattern you've created and you'll see it update in real time. Now this next one is quite important. This is the horizontal and vertical spacing. Again, you can lock these proportions, but if I change the horizontal spacing from zero to let's say 50 pixels, it will then add a 50 pixel gap between each of the elements. And we can do the same for vertical, or we could link these together and we could change these and they will adjust the horizontal and the vertical distance equally. So we'll leave this set as zero because for this pattern, we want all of the edges to butt up against each other. Now you've got overlap here. Now this controls how the patterns overlap. But as I say, you can see I'm changing it here. It's not doing anything. So it just depends on the type of pattern you create. If you play around with these options, you can see in real time what kind of effect it's going to have. So some options will affect other patterns differently to how they affect others. Now you can adjust the dim copies bit here. You can of course deselect that if you'd like to see the pattern repeated in all its full color glory. And you can show the tile edge. So we can see the edge with our artboard anyway, but you can show this marked with a blue line. So this represents the tile and then each of these segments here, you can see where I'm moving my mouse, that is marked as a tile. So at the moment we've got three by three, which of course gives us nine but we can of course change this. So let's go for seven by seven. And when you're happy, just go up to the top and you can select save as copy. I'll save it as a new swatch. You can select done or cancel. So let's just select done. And then we can create a new shape. So let's just left click and drag with the rectangle tool. And we'll deselect that stroke and give this a fill. Let's pick our new cutesy wallpaper swatch and there we go. So you can see that it takes the swatch that we created and then applies that pattern effect. And we can of course go back into the swatches panel, double click that swatch and we can adjust this in real time. So we could even reduce the gap to negative 20 and you'll see it brings everything closer together. So there's lots of different options there depending on the type of pattern that you're trying to create. 
So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.